We are in Copenhagen for the TM Forum's DTW Ignite 2025. I'm here with Angelo Libertucci. He's Global Head of Industry for Telecom at Google Cloud. Angelo, great to have you with us today. Thanks very much for joining Telecom TV. Great to be here as well. Thank you so much for having me. So one of the key themes here at this event is, you know, nearly everything is going to hinge around AI, but for the telecom operator community, you know, the drive towards autonomous networks as well as, well as general automation is just a massive driver for their businesses. And mm -hmm. Google Cloud has just unveiled its autonomous networks operating framework. Can you just give us a, a very quick overview of, of what that is and why you've just like announced this, launched this into the market? Yeah, so we're very, very excited about this. Um, listen, Google operates uh, the largest private network in the world. We have uh, nine services with over a billion users. Um, so we have, um, but we do that at a fraction of the, of the people that operate the network that, you know, even a regional telco would have, you know, in North America. And that's because of all the autonomy that we build into our network. A lot of the algorithms and the models that we're using to really drive autonomous networking, even in our own uh, planet, uh, planet scale network. So what we're doing is providing a glimpse of our framework uh, to our telecom partners. Um, who've been asking us over the years to uh, help them on this journey. Um, it includes a lot of our, uh, uh, you know, state-of-the-art infrastructure products like Spanner, BigQuery, but also it's the integration into the intelligence layer into our Vertex AI platform, which is our model platform and graph neural pro uh, network platforms, and then um, uh, into the agentic layer with agent space. And these are where agents actually not only action uh, corrective action based on a root cause that can happen in the network, but they also, uh, uh, you know, get involved in workflows into other IT systems based on what might happen into the network. So it's a it's a framework that will it's phase one of a framework that we will continue to add to with with algorithms and models uh, over time. We have um, a robust partner ecosystem as part of this framework. Yeah, I was going to say, because you know, you've got this massive network, as do the operators. You're doing the kind of stuff with your network that they would like to do, but you're not a telecom operator. Obviously, Google has found out through Google Fiber that once you get into the telecom domain, it can get a little bit more tricky, a little bit more difficult, but you have telecom industry partners to bring in the the domain expertise into this don't you? absolutely so we listen we have we have a framework we have a very prescriptive and opinionated point of view on this framework and how it should be uh, you know how it should be deployed uh, and, and and architected in the network based on the use cases and the data that you want to come in so we will have Google Cloud consulting uh, as part of this framework which is I think a very strong uh, key uh, to this. However, we also have our strong partner ecosystem. You know, Ericsson, Nokia, Amdocs are all building their autonomous network framework uh, using uh, uh, our framework as well. And we have, you know, folks like Capgemini, Accenture, et cetera, that are also engaging with us so that we can actually scale this out uh, 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 more globally. Okay. Uh, any more other than those three? Obviously, there's a big name. There's an ongoing list of, 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 uh, of key partners that are going to continue. Uh, there's the ProDAPs of the world, et cetera, that we continue to work with. Um, and we're just ultimately need to help our customers in scale. Um, so we're excited about it. Okay. And how do you see this uh, sort of um, playing with the, the, the telecom operators? Because when you announce this, you know, quite, quite rightly, and as one would expect, you mentioned, you know, existing uh, reference engagements. So with uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, Telstra, Bell Canada. Um, but these are sort of uh, specific parts of what you're offering as part of this framework. Nobody's gone, okay, I want everything you've got to do everything we yeah. need. Yeah. Uh, do you see this kind of, you know, as, as so here's our framework, but and this might suit you for this, and this might suit you, so it's sort of a patchwork, a jigsaw kind of thing. So the way we always get started with customers is to prove out value. That's the number one thing we need to do. Like yeah, we're, we're trying to solve problems for, for our partners, um, you know, there's, the reason why we're launching this today is because of the challenges generally that the telecom industry is under, uh, a lot of capex pressure, fragmented technology, declining ARPU. So we're trying to really solve problems with them. So we're always proving out the use cases first. So as it relates to the autonomous network initiatives that we've had with some of these customers, we're, we're identifying what's the one use case as an example uh, that they really want to look at uh, where we can really make 
strides as it relates to adding value. So, for example, at Bell Canada and Deutsche Telekom, it was the RAN uh, network. So we, you know, we really built the pipeline, uh, really looked at that one use case, and we proved out the value of the anomaly detection and the proactive maintenance that uh, that's required. Once you have that locked in with the pipeline and you have a framework in place, you can then start to extend it across other use cases, like across the core network, across Wi-Fi experiences, uh, or what or what have you. Okay. Um, now, obviously, you know, this has there's there's a lot of boxes that are ticked here in what the telcos are looking for, but there's a few other things that specifically they're looking for now in terms of their cloud uh, data AI strategies, and that's sovereignty. Um, and, you know, I, I've chatted to a few people in the industry uh, about this proposition, and they say a lot of plus points there, but who's going to be interested in this framework outside of North America? Because Google will be able to offer that sort of sovereign position there, but not so much in other markets. So how, how do you address that, that question around sovereignty? I mean, we um, have partnerships with all global carriers where we're you know, very diligent about meeting, meeting all sovereign requirements based on where we have our regions. We also have, be outside of our regions, we have other sovereign solutions. We have our the Google Distributed Cloud, which is an air gap solution that is completely sovereign and not even connected to cloud if that's the route that they want to go. We actually, um, if you wanted to do it in, co in conjunction with cloud, uh, we have our Google Distributed Cloud that now locally runs Gemini for local inferencing. So you can do a lot of that locally as well. Um, and then ultimately the conversation is also about key management and who holds the keys to your data. So uh, we allow our customers to bring and manage uh, their data with their own keys uh, on our platform. So sovereignty is, is not uh, clear cut, uh, but you know, so far we've been able to address a lot of the requirements with the flexibility that we have in our offerings. Okay, so are you saying that any operator in any market that said we want to do, we like the look of this, but we want to keep um, all the data and do all of the processing in our geographic market so we can meet our national uh, regulations and requirements, you can deliver that? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. all righty. And the other Not thing- Not only that, if I okay. can add. No, 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 please do. This is a huge area of opportunities for telco themselves. We have a lot of enterprise organizations, you know, as, as um, you know, sovereignty becomes part of national agendas. Absolutely. Um, uh, telcos are very well positioned to actually offer sovereign solutions to their customers. Not for the first time they're well positioned to, to, do to drive new right? revenues. But so. yeah, I mean, there's, there's, they have, uh, they can offer the secure and compliant solutions yeah. um, across a nationally trusted infrastructure. We're doing that with Indosat. Their Proximus sovereign cloud platform is actually based on Google Cloud's uh, technology. So. Uh, a lot of examples, Deutsche Telekom launched a sovereign cloud with Google Cloud. So yes, we can address it, but more importantly, they have the opportunity to actually um, uh, offer this uh, to their own organizations. Yeah, that's, that's the hope and that's what a lot of them are, are working on and getting excited about. So hopefully something will come out of that for this industry. Um, and the other thing that uh, you know, a lot of uh, operators look at day on day and is really important is security in a lot of its aspects, and that includes, um, you know, redundancy, uptime, um, and, you know, every now and again, of course, you get, there is, there are cloud outages, doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. What kind of guarantees could Google give to telecom operators that there is redundancy in the systems, even in these sovereign uh, setups, that means that if they are running uh, autonomous network, um, uh, autonomous networks using Google's platform, that this will always be running, that it's, you know, beyond five nines guaranteed. Yeah, so listen, the, the, plat the platforms that we have and the infrastructure we have, for example, a key part of the autonomous network framework is, uh, is Spanner. And Spanner is a, is a state-of-the-art database that's perfectly suited for autonomous networking because, um, you know, it's, it's really high throughput, it's low latency, uh, it supports both graph and relational databases, so you really get a digital view uh, of your multi-layered network uh, and understanding, but also it's globally managed at scale with zero downtime. So, um, you know, we do work with our customers, we work with our partners to make sure that we're 
we're architecting this appropriately, um, you know, with the appropriate downtime and disaster recovery mechanisms in place. Okay. But I asked that particular question because there was Google Cloud downtime last week that impacted customers, Correct. including one of telecom TV suppliers, actually. So we noticed yeah. it ourselves. So how does that, you know? Well, it the source of that outage yeah. wasn't necessarily the infrastructure itself. That was more at a, at a management layer. So we always have to look at uh, the source of the outage. I think we, we released uh, the findings uh, just yesterday. Uh, so we have a bit more clarity now on, on why that happened. Okay. But are you able to, to provide guarantees that these kind of things wouldn't impact? Because if you've got autonomous network operations and they go down, then potentially you have millions of customers impacted. Yeah, so ultimately I think customers always have to really look at um, the comfort level that they have, the, the guarantees that are in place and the architecture that's in place across all the hyperscalers and, and you know figure out an architecture that's best suited for them and we're more than confident and happy to have that conversation with all our customers. Okay, all right. And so great to speak to you. Thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, enjoy the show and look forward to catching up again in the future. It's great being here. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks very much.